Welcome to the dog show, today on Carpe Diem. This show is going to the dogs. Now literally, it's going to be about dogs. There's about 90 million dogs living in homes in the U.S. alone. There are our family, our workout partners, our security guards, and our therapists, in my house at least. They join the army and the police force, and they've got their own schools and clothes and TV shows. So America may be divided, but we can agree on this. Dogs rule, unless you're a cat person. But why are we so obsessed, and why do we care about dog shows? And why are some dogs good and others more like Clifford the Big Red Dog, who actually was good in the end? And does my dog really love me? And of course the answer is yes. To talk about that, we welcome renowned dog trainer and author Pam Dennison and Kelly Whiteside, who's both an assistant professor of sports journalism here at Montclair State, but more importantly, has spent the past week covering the Westminster Dog Show in Madison Square Garden for the New York Times. Kelly, Pam, welcome to Carpe Diem. Thank you. Thank you. So Kelly, uh, let's start with you. you. You covered the Westminster Dog Show and there was a huge upset. There was. Right? There was a huge upset. Flynn, uh, Bijan Frise, I believe I got that correct, ended up winning. Now Ty, who's a giant schnauzer, mm -hmm. technically speaking, a giant schnauzer, was the number one seed. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the dog show is literally the most difficult deadline I ever have to uh, write to because you never know what's going to happen. Um, and it ends right at midnight and deadlines right at midnight. So in terms of what happens, anything can happen. Not The favorite does not always win. You know, it's, it's a little bit like, you know, the first round of the NCAA tournament. Uh, upsets abound uh, when it comes down to it. Yeah, you said, you said it's the hardest, one of the hardest things you've ever covered. Mm -hmm. I assume because it's hard to get good quotes from the dogs. It but, is. So it why is. was it so hard to it, cover? It is. They're, they're, they're tough. Um, it's so hard to cover because you never know what's going to happen. There's sort of, uh, you, you're trying to predict the seven dogs come to the end, and you're trying to predict which one, and the favorite doesn't always win. Um, so what I try to do to prepare is just have good backstories, and Flynn did not have a great backstory, so that's what killed me on deadline. But the other dogs had good backstories. So that's why it's so hard, because you just don't know what name is going to be called, and then you've got to come up with a narrative about, yes, an athlete you can't interview um, on deadline. And, and now you're a dog person. I am. You have two dogs. I do. And so does that make it easier for you as a journalist, because you have kind of a currency of knowledge about dogs? Uh, it does. I mean, one of the things, it, it is really one of my favorite things to cover of all time because, you know, at what sporting event do you get to, you know, give your scratchies and cuddle and kiss, you know, with the people you're hanging out with? I, um, I mean, you could do that. It's inappropriate. I, I could. I could. <laughs> Basketball. <laughs> I would, I would it's no a little, longer yeah. be writing for You'd the be New tough, York Times. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, if you love dogs, it's a great place to be, even if you're a fan because everybody gets to go backstage. You, you don't people with credentials aren't the ones only allowed backstage. There's 2,700 dogs, and literally you can, you know, pet them, talk to the handlers, um, and, and just hang out. So if you love dogs, it's like there's no better place to be. And so what is the crowd like at, at the Westminster Dog Show? Is it, are there, I mean, are there fans of breeds? Are there fans of an individual dog? Is this like going to the NCAA tournament where one quarter is for like the herding dogs and then one part of the stadiums for the, another group of dogs? Like what's the crowd like? You know, it's funny because uh, at, the, at the best of show, which is Tuesday night, um, it, it's the garden, right? So we sure. have some, you know, we, yes, we have some, you know, uh, fans that are pretty quiet, but then you have fans like as if it's, you know, the, the NFL draft screaming out their, <laughs> <laughs> their choices. So there was a pug named Biggie, um, who was a fan favorite. Um, so, you know, there was a lot of, go Biggies! You know, Biggies, a lot of people chatting for Biggies. Beans was a big favorite. So there was a lot of, yeah, there was a lot of uh, partisans in the crowd. We'll talk about Beans later, because yeah, uh, I want to get into that. Topic. But, but, uh, but did the dogs seem to recognize their fan bases? I mean, did, are they playing it up for the fans? According to the handlers, they, Show dogs are so used to crowds and show used, so used to that atmosphere, maybe not, you know, a full arena like, like that. But you start playing the regional circuit and then you work up to the <laughs> you garden. Do, yeah, you do, you yeah. um, do. That, that they respond to the crowd. Um, a lot of the handlers say that, that 
the dogs, you know, as soon as like the light comes on, they it's showtime. Sure, showtime, <laughs> right, it's theater. So, uh, so Pam, I wanna bring you into this conversation and okay. you train dogs both, you know, for, for shows, but also just to make sure that they're not ripping up the couch like might happen in my house. Yes. But tell me, do dogs enjoy competitions? Do they enjoy dog shows? You know, it depends on how they're trained. If they're trained using positive methods and making everything fun and working with the dog you have, then yeah, they very much enjoy it. Um, one of my dogs, she's a rock star. She just loves the limelight. <laughs> Um, my other dog is a little more nervous about the environment, so for him, he likes it to a certain point, but then he gets a little nervous. So it's almost like kids, where some kids really thrive in, exactly. you know, like playing big time sports, others, exactly. you know, they, they have different yeah. interests. But it's certainly trainable. It's right. very trainable. Well, and, and I mean, this is going to sound a little ridiculous, but are they happy when they win? Like, I always wonder this, like, at a horse race. Like, is the dog, when they win, are they like, oh, finally, I've worked for this. It's been, you know, seven years in the making, and now finally, you know, I've, I've achieved my life's, my life's. Are, do they know that they win? Do they understand that, that concept? I think they understand the adrenaline rush. Mm -hmm. And, like, the Border Collie that won uh, on the, uh, the uh, agility, the, uh, I forget the dog's name, but... Um, that dog was, you could tell that dog was pumped and very, very happy. And so it's the adrenaline. And if you make it fun for the dog, then they, they enjoy it. But I don't think they really know if they won or not. You know, now, as the, the owner of a, uh, shall we say, a mutt, a, a mixed breed, a, a, you know, Heinz 57, I was very happy that they're incorporating mixed breeds into, yes. into shows as well. How did yes. that, I'm sure that was a political process. Do you know, yes. how did that happen? Um, I think that... There was a lot of pressure brought to the AKC mm -hmm. um, about allowing dogs, mixed breed dogs, into some of the competitions. Obviously not Westminster because they, they have to be pure, purebreds for that. Mm -hmm. But for competition obedience, agility, tracking, a lot of all the other AKC sports, yeah, all mixed breeds are now allowed. You know, I want, I'm going to ask a very controversial question. Um, I believe there's been some dog shows where cats have been. Has there been a cat division? Am I wrong on that? I'm not aware of uh, one. I know there are cat there shows. There are cat shows, certainly. But certainly not with the American Kennel Club. Right. Because, would you, would you yeah. th could they ever do a dog and a cat show together at the same venue and kind of expand the... Well, that would be up to the them. The double header. You know, yeah, like that a, would be up to them. Double header show. Probably not, though. So, because yeah, could, a lot of these dogs, you know, might not be real good with cats. So yeah. I could just, you could just uh, uh, imagine, you can imagine the pandemonium. And yeah. <laughs> well, and I don't want to get too philosophical here, Pam. And, but of course, this is a university and that's what we do. Right. But what gives a dog a sense of purpose? I mean, you train dogs, you work with dogs, and you, yeah. you both work with dogs for competition, but also dogs that are maybe, you know, kind of running afoul of the law, shall we say, and you, you right. help rehabilitate dogs. What gives right. a dog purpose in life? Well, first you want to look at what they were bred to do. So you wouldn't ask a basset hound to do sheep herding mm. because they weren't bred for that. They don't have the instinct for that. Um, I think the best thing that you can do is whatever breed of dog you have, look what they were bred to do and work with that and give them that outlet. Yeah. You know, terriers go to ground. So they have this new uh, sport called barn hunt where they find these rats in tubes, everything's safe. It's, you know, very, it's, it's not, they're not killing the rats or anything. So the rats love it. <laughs> well, the rats don't care. They're in tubes eating, sure. eating food, you yeah. know, they don't care. And it's like the Truman Show for rats, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, border collies like to herd, but of course, most of us don't have sheep or farms. So what do we do? We, we do other types of, of sports that will help um, give that dog the need to work, okay? Um, you know, there's carting for dogs that were bred to, to cart, like Bernie's Mountain Dogs and things like that. Um, so it, you know, beagles are, are hunting dogs, bassets are hunting dogs. So if you pick a sport or an activity that goes with what they were bred for, then you're going to have a happy dog. Mm -hmm. uh, Kelly, you know, you are not just, of course, a, a dog journalist, but also a dog owner. And so, um, what, why do you have dogs? Like what, what's your relationship like with your dogs? You sent us some photos this morning of the dogs just so we could kind exactly. of yeah, get to know them. Um, you know, I, I couldn't imagine not having dogs. Mm -hmm. You know, they're just such an important part of my life. As a kid, I always had dogs, um, and, and now I have two. Um, I just think they bring so much joy 
um, you know, to your family, to your kids. Um, they're great to get, you know, out of the house, get exercise. Um, you know, and, and they, they are part of the family. And, and I think, um, you know, if you have dogs in your life, you just sort of can't imagine not having dogs in your life. Yeah. See, I was not raised with dogs. You know, we decided when we had kids we were gonna have a dog and it was totally new to me and it changed my life. I mean, really life altering experience. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine living without dogs at this point. It might be the only living sentiment being in my house that actually likes me and that's, that's up for debate. <laughs> and we'll, we'll get yeah. to that later. Um, but, but that said, you know, you have seen, uh, we've all seen the, 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 the best in show, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> Which is kind of like Spinal Tap and like Spinal Tap, there's some truth in some of the, you know, some of the fiction. So I want to know, having covered the dog mm -hmm. show, what were the most eccentric stories you saw? There must have been some interesting stories about some of the owners that had these kind of interesting personality types. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of truth in Best in Show. <laughs> and, and that's one of the reasons why I love to cover it. It's, it's, I equate it to figure skating. One of the reasons why I love to figure skating because of the kind of outlandish characters, over the top characters. And those same characters gravitate to dog shows in terms of owners, um, not so much the handlers, uh, but the owners. I mean, you know, uh, w if you just watch a do dog show, it's comical to begin with, right? So the, the handlers are running around the ring, you know, um, they have liver treats in their mouth, you know, they're squeaking toys. Um, so just even they the have liver, they have the liver treats in yes, their mouth. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, Pam, you've done this, right? <laughs> you, you run around with liver treats. Well, I don't use liver, but yeah, I, you know, I'd use cheese or steak yeah. or something. Have you like, ever accidentally just swallowed one of the treats? Well, yeah, if it's good, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, that cheese that went down, all right, here's another one, you know. But cheese, dogs love cheese, right? Yeah, cheese or steak or chicken. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're vegetarians. So we have a moral issue. I mean, the dog's not yeah. a vegetarian. We, we've asked right. several times. Right. Well, you can you know, you use carrot or something. Yeah, no, we, we do the dog, a lot of cheese in the house. Dog loves yeah. dog doesn't like the carrot so much. Yeah. Not a healthy yeah. dog. Yeah. And we've talked about this. We've, you know, we've gone over it several times. We just don't care. Uh, so, uh, Pam, you know, you work with a lot of people that come to you with yeah. their dogs not, not behaving the way they want their dog to behave, right? right. Right. And they, 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 I, we tried everything. We went to, to puppy kindergarten, whatever they do. I, my dog is a graduate of puppy kindergarten. And then whatever that, like puppy first grade or something like that, mm -hmm. was not then asked to continue on. I mean, I think we had reached kind of the apex of, of his educational progress. He really, I mean, his SATs were low. So the, uh, <laughs> but, uh, I mean, he's a good dog, but he's not, he wasn't, he wasn't first grade material. So I was just, just yeah, he just material. needed tutoring. Perhaps. I mean, you know, we had to decide if we were going to go down the private school route, if that was something we could, we could budget for. But, but regardless, um, you know, I mean, we regret some of those decisions, obviously. But, but what are the most common training mistakes that people make? So they come to you and they said, we've been doing this, and what have they been doing wrong? What are the things that you have to undo the most? Punishment. Forcing the dog, yanking the dog, kicking the dog shocking the dog, prong mm. collars, choking, alpha rolls, scruff shake, stuff that they see on reality TV shows that has nothing to do with reality. Ha, ha and, then, and then I have to fix it. So, and, and kind of playing off of that, I mean, there are a lot of shows, and I won't name any specific ones, but there are a lot of programs about dog trainers on TV, and they're fun right. to watch. Are those doing a disservice? Very much so. Why? because they are promoting uh, this outmoded, outdated, dangerous methodology, for lack of another word to call it, um, that we must dominate our dogs, mm -hmm. as opposed to help nurture, uh, make clear, concise decisions about. My training secret, so my dog, Tell me if you think this is a good plan. You can, you can use it if you'd like. So when my dog, when our dog was, was a puppy, he was a nipper, like you know, right. a lot of dogs nip. And so we heard somewhere that if you coat yourself with butter, that, that they'll learn butter. to, oh yeah. So we, I would just coat my whole body with butter. And so the dog would <laughs> lick instead of nipping. So we I've did never peanut butter. butter. No we butter. Pe well, we did peanut butter. Okay. Well, which, I didn't, which that was, is a little. It was a heavy. I don't need to. <laughs> It's more like a tanning oil I was putting on. So I'd walk around all day basically wearing like boxer shorts covered in butter and the dog would just lick me. And I, I apologize for the visual, yeah, everyone. Yeah. yeah, so the, uh, <laughs> so can't undo that, right? So, but, but I would do that. And now, but our dog developed 
a really, really strong kind of licking habit. So everywhere, right, so my dog be... will my dog will lick anyone. We go to the vet, they're like, oh, he's so sweet, because you get dog kisses, and so, and you know, right. is that, but are those kind of things good? I mean, just those kind of corrective? Um, that's, I've never <laughs> heard that one. I've been doing this for 22 you years. You can have it. I, uh... and, <laughs> and that's a new one on me. Um, but, yeah, because what a lot of people would do, I, I was actually kind of cringing inside that you were, going to tell me that you were going to, you know, you held the dog's mouth shut oh, no, and no. that kind of thing, because that's what a lot of people do, because that's the information they're gleaning off of these, you know, quote unquote, t uh, dog trainer shows or on Facebook or on YouTube, where there's so much mis misinformation. Um, so, but you know, I look at it this way. If that works for you, <laughs> and I'm okay with it. And it did no harm to the dog. No, just no about. dogs were harmed in this butter licking. No, thing. I mean sometimes I had to cover myself with toast as well, just to kind of <laughs> make it work for everyone. But you know, and I would smell. I get to work, and you know, I'd smell like a Denny's, and that, yeah. that was that. But beyond yeah. that, it was no, it was it yeah. was it totally worked. But now, that's a very that was a very creative solution. Yeah. yeah, I mean, who doesn't want to wear butter all day anyway? Yeah. So now our dog sleeps in our bed, and uh, which I think is where where what God intended, and and so. Uh, I mean, if they if God didn't want dogs to sleep in bed, why do they make a California king, right, in the first place? So, because right. no one needs that much room. So, so our dog sleeps in our bed, lives on the couch, and gets hair everywhere, just coated in hair. My wife thinks that you know maybe we've spoiled him a little bit too much, kind of let him think he has dominion over too much of the house. Um, I can actually tell you a story. I mean, this is another personal. During our our son's again, not to get too personal, but during our son's brisses. Um, which is, of course, a very intimate moment, and you need a sterile environment. Yeah. We had to take our dog out of the house because the dog refused to not be a part of the ceremony. He wanted to be. Right. He's like, "Hey, look, you know, ritual circumcision. I should be there." You know. So, uh, so is is and Kelly laughed at that. So, <laughs> so, um, so, but, but, are we doing the right or wrong thing by letting the dog kind of stay on the couch all the time? The dog just kind of goes where the dog wants to go. Is that okay, or should there be stricter limits in a house? It depends. My dogs are allowed on every piece of furniture except the kitchen table. Okay. And they're too short for the counter, so we're good. Uh, so I don't have to worry about counter surfing. Um, but some people don't want it. And I, I find if they don't want it, a lot of times they think, if they think the dog is like taking over. And again, that, that horrible dominance word. If my dogs would not get off the couch or the bed or me when I asked, then I wouldn't let them up. But they do. Mm -hmm. So as long as they do what I ask, if they get off when I need them to get off, then I'm totally fine with them being on furniture. All right, so it's just because, about I mean, it's, that's why we have dogs. So we can cuddle them. Yes. So we can sleep with them. Exactly. I mean, my dog sleeps with his head on my shoulder. I mean, oh my God. So we can dress them up for Halloween and go on vacation together. Exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> That's what God you know, put them if, here if for. If you desensitize your dog to the costume, <laughs> knock knock yourself no out. our dog will not will not be dressed we've tried this one before it is yeah, a, yeah. that's when you get bit right. um, so <laughs> kelly i want to go back to the to you to the to the dog show and a couple of the dogs that you covered one was a dog named bean what was so special about him and and why didn't he win i know i was devastated so bean is <laughs> now as a journalist you're not supposed to have a horse in the no, race or a dog in the race right but, but I, all rules go right. out the window it's when true. it comes to dog shows so uh bean is a sussex spaniel um and what Bean did is he totally won over the crowd because, you know, he'd be trotting down the, the green carpet at Madison Square Garden and then just kind of lean back on his legs and go into the beg position, right? And so the judge would lean over and then he would beg, you know, because really what he wanted was chicken. But, um, you know, every few steps he would do this. So the crowd just fell in love with this dog that not necessarily misbehaving, but just showing so much personality. So he was definitely the, the fan favorite, the sentimental favorite, mm -hmm. heading into Best in Show. And there was another dog that, that you seemed to, to be taken by, which mm -hmm. was a, a dog named Rumi, who's a, a pulley. Is that right? Pulley? Uh, yes, yes. So he's a pulley. So uh, Rumi is his name. And he, uh, I did a feature on pulleys simply because of what they look like. And basically, you know, they're dreadlocked dogs. And, um, you know, people just fall in love with, because it's so unusual. 
Um, and I did a story just on what goes into maintaining a Pooley's coat and preparing for a show, which is basically, you know, a 12 hour process. And, and if it rains, yeah. it's like a, a, just to go like a couple blocks, it yeah. takes like three hours, right? Because you have to cover the dog and, and right. all that kind of stuff. So scrunchies are used yeah. uh, to, to put up the dog's hair, um, you know, because basically if the dog is walking around with his, his, you know, his full coat of hair, he will sop up every puddle on 7th Avenue. Hmm. Now, um, uh, the, uh, I have a kind of a larger, very deep question, Pam, about dogs and humans. And mm -hmm. it's really more about me, which is kind of the, the genesis of all my, my questions. Does my dog actually love me? I've never seen your dog, so I don't know. <laughs> well, let's imagine. <laughs> but my dog, he kisses my face. He gets excited when I come home. Right. I mean, you know, all the things, like that's what I assume love to be, right? You know, you're excited when you see one another. You kiss well, you yeah. in the face. Is yeah. that love? I don't know, because I'm not a dog. Do they like us? Yeah. But love is a human emotion. Do, is that, do they like us just because I feed them and do those things? Or do they like us because they're like, oh, you know, he's a, he's a straight shooter, or like he's a good guy? Well, he, you know, they take care, you, know, you take care of him. Right. And you care for him, and you feed him, and you walk him. But is this just, is this just barter here, him. or like, are we actually like having a relationship? Like if I, if I lost my job and, and couldn't take care of him, would he still be like, I still love you anyway? Yes. Okay. Yes, because I do notice myself, if I'm not feeling well, yeah. my dogs are like right there. They're like very much comforting me. And I've had some very interesting experiences when, you know, things are going wrong, as life does sometimes. Yeah. And my dogs are like totally on top of me. And they're very, very, instead of like, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. They're just kind of like, okay, mom, this is what you need. I'll just lay on top of you and and wait until you feel better so you know so i think they they very much sense that i wanted to have a bark mitzvah for my dog and my wife said unacceptable like, <laughs> i mean a, it's the expense and you know you keep up with the joneses you know we want you go to one bark mitzvah they have dancers you go to another bark mitzvah and it's just we can't afford it so and then we're not even in long island i mean then really the bark mitzvah circuit is really hot so i i like to you know i get into the whole humanizing of the dogs Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't do the costumes, but certainly I know a lot of people do. Mm -hmm. Is that a bad thing for us as dog owners to kind of humanize them and treat them like we treat humans? Yes and no. Everything has a yes and no answer, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. That's okay. Because if we treat them like humans, then sometimes we're giving them not more credit, that's not really the right word, but we're expecting them to have the same exact emotions and motivations that we do. And that sometimes is a disservice to the dog. Yeah. And then people get mad at the dog and they call them stubborn and they call them stupid. When they're really not, they're just either not trained, they don't understand what you're asking. So it really depends. I mean, do I very much take care of my dogs? Do I spoil my dogs? Yes and no. Because I don't spoil them. Like if they're barking, I don't give them a cookie to shut them up because that reinforces them for barking. Mm -hmm. So I'm very clear. But I do, I, my dogs are always foremost in my mind, always taking care of them in any way that I can. Um, so it's, it's, it's a fine line because you don't want to treat them like a child because they're not. They're not human. They don't speak English. Sure. By the way, I, I have a theory that I have a dog and a cat, and I, I, I watch that movie Pets. I have a theory that my dog and my cat, when we leave, they, they totally hang out, and they, they're in cahoots. They invite people over. Like, I really think that happens in my house, and it's entirely possible. Now, if you are looking for a dog, um, and I, like I said, I'm a, I'm a shelter dog guy, you know, mm -hmm. but how do you know what kind of dog to get? Depends on your lifestyle. So if you are um, elderly, or you have a bad back, or you don't have a lot of time, like if, if you have a bad, if I'm five feet tall, I'm not going to get a 150 pound dog, okay, because I wouldn't be able to walk it, even, even while I'm in the process of training. And if they decide to take off, you know, before they're trained, I'm toast. I'm face plant. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I like to stick with dogs myself that I can pick up in an emergency. Okay, um, but you'll have to look at your lifestyle. Are you an active person? Well, then you don't want a Basset Hound, you know, or a Clumber Spaniel, because sure. they're more kind of couch potato dogs. 
But if you're a very active person, yeah, then you get an active breed. If you're not an active person, then you get one of the lower active dogs. Yeah. You uh, know. Uh, uh, Kelly, having after you covered, first of all, I want a prediction for next year for Westminster. <laughs> I want the early, I know it's a too early, early top 25 early. kind of thing. But, <laughs> but having covered, and you've covered, you know, you, you've done the dog show circuit, but having covered Westminster, do you have a better or worse opinion of the sport of a dog? Because it's pretty foreign to a lot of us. And I, I ask this in the context, I know a lot of people who have covered horse racing, and the deeper you get into horse racing, often the more you say, oh, I'm not really, I don't like that, I'm not comfortable with it. And there, there's a seedy underbelly, certainly, with, mm -hmm. with, with horse racing. Do you have a better or worse view of kind of dog shows after, That's after getting excited? That's a good question. Um, you know, I, I you know, I, I kind of wonder, you know, the dogs that are con continually traveling and on the circuit, you know, do they really enjoy that? Because you would think that they would most enjoy just hanging out on the couch at home with their family. Um, you know, so, so I do question, you know, it's, it's a limited time. It's not like they're on the dog show circuit for years and years. It's pretty much a defined year. So if you look at it, a defined year of their life, um, I mean, you know, there's a union contract, obviously. <laughs> the dogs yeah, are yeah, you know, exactly. union. Exactly. So. Yep. Liver treats are... Or, or not. Uh, so, yeah, you wonder, you know, sort of the, the psychological impact that some of this stuff might have on dogs. I mean, I think the handlers um, are the ones that are with the dogs and they are, you know, truly the dog experts. Um, the dogs, when they're shown, traditionally live with the handlers. Um, and then after the show career ends, they go back to the owners um, and the families. Uh, Pam, we're, we're running out of time. One, uh, if they want to get more information from you or learn more about what you do or kind of get some advice about training, tell us at positivedogs.com or pamdennison.com. Pamdennison.com. Okay, and this is at Positive Dogs, and so where would they yeah. go? Um, go to your website. Go to my website, and I've got online classes. I've got in-person classes. I've got webinars. I've got books. I've got DVDs. I, ha I do Skype. Um, I even have somebody in Alaska, because obviously oh, wow. Alaska to New Jersey is a little bit far. It's a commute. tough commute. All right. Yeah. So, so, so Pam Dennison, go find and make sure your dog is behaving and get the right dog. Yes. Thank you very much, Kelly. Thank you, Thank you very much, Pam, for joining Thank us Thank you so today. much. If you'd like more information about this or any other edition of Carpe Diem, you can write to us at the email address on your screen, Carpe Diem at, at mail.montclair.edu, or call us at 973-655-5158. For Carpe Diem, I'm Keith Strudler. Thanks for watching.